Okay, we need to talk about Kevin. Devin, Devin, we need to talk about Devin, Devin AI, the uh, autonomous AI engineer that everyone is losing their minds about, about all, how all software engineers are going to be obsolete very soon. I don't want to talk about Devin AI in itself because there's plenty of videos that's already covered that. I already covered that. But what I want to talk about is uh, a, a thought exercise. Let's do a thought exercise of actually thinking about if Devin AI became the normal thing. And what I want to talk about is the security concerns and there are a lot of them so for those who are just getting into this video are unfamiliar with devon ai it's this new innovation where there is an ai agent that can run its own console it can check in its own code it has its own ide and it has its own browser and it should do whatever tasks you ask it to as a software engineer and then it just kind of runs off and does the work and it sounds pretty amazing but there's a lot of things that you got to think about and in this video, I want to talk about a lot of them. I want to talk about like secret storage, databases, protections, physical security. Those are just some of the topics that I want to uh, discuss today. So let's just dive in. First of all, some background for the first like five years of my career was almost exclusively in like the information security space of uh, hacking red teams and developing secure software and constantly having the tinfoil hat of being paranoid about er any sort of possibility. So naturally, when it comes to Devon AI, I immediately start thinking about all the things that can go wrong. And these are some of the topics that immediately come to mind when I'm thinking about autonomous AI agents, whether that's Devon or whatever you want to call them. First of all, let's let's define what Devon is. Devon is something that is uh, it's software driven. It is an AI software driven agent, so to speak. With uh, and since it's a developer, it's going to have admin privileges. And it can also run arbitrary code and run different tooling on a different system. If I define that for you, maybe like five years ago, what would you call that? In the information security space, you would call that a rootkit. And that's like the, the ultimate weapon in a hacker's arsenal is be able to install a rootkit onto a machine and have complete access to do whatever you want. But this serves it up like a platter, like it's a feature, like Devon AI, it's wonderful. But what else can you do it? You can do pretty much all the harm you can ever think of in this form. Now, for all of those people that think that that's not something you need to worry about, I'd love to hear how you're going to prevent against that. Because thinking about AI, about how it's not declarative, about how it's generative, about how it finds its solutions, tell me how like you can prescribe it to say, uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't hack other systems. Don't dump the database. Don't do this. Don't do that. How do you do that and have 100% confidence that it won't do that, you know, that you can't get around it? I feel like that's one of the biggest hurdles that they need to solve right away. So with that same topic, let's talk about like secret store, like in the demo itself, you're handing him a bunch of API keys. And if the AI agent is supposed to be just like a developer, they have access to everything. They should have access. This AI agent should have access to the database, should have access to all the secret keys for API keys, all the, you know, the precious things that you need to lock down, you're giving to an agent that you don't necessarily have 100% control over. And again, how are you going to train this so that you don't have any sort of key leakages through Git commits, through history, through network logs, like any of that? How can you make sure that this AI agent does not do some of those things? And that brings me up to my next point of like, what kind of database protections can we actually put on this? If you want it to act like a developer and do developer tasks, they're going to need to do, they're going to need to be able to do mutations and changes to the database, whether that's just reading a bunch, but also like changing the data. So just one little slip up of a command then could have repercussions of prompting it to drop a table. How do you know that a typo won't cause an entire table to be dropped with the idea that there's some miscommunication between the operator, the person giving Devin the instructions, and Devin being like, sure, I heard you say drop all the tables. Boom. There's going to have to be some serious uh, considerations about how you're going to have safeguards around the database and sort of those kind of actions. And in the same sense, especially in the microservice world, like how are you going to prevent API calls from doing mutations that you don't want to do, even in a proof of concept. And this could definitely have like financial repercussions too, is that if you have an API that is charging by the call and you have uh, an AI agent iterating over every single 
record and racking up 5,000 API requests. And then that mistake is gonna cost the company real money because you have this AI agent just slamming an API endpoint without you really like trying to prevent it while it's doing it. Okay, so earlier I mentioned physical security. Now security in this sense is like, like a physical machine, like you being at the computer and being able to lock it down. Typically, not, not many people have to worry about that. You have like encrypted drives, you have logins, you have two-factor authentication, all that kind of stuff. But another layer of security is the, is the idea of security through obscurity. So if someone was able to jump onto your laptop at a coffee shop, if you just left it open and unlocked, there's not much damage they could do because before they can do anything quickly, they would have to know how your system is set up, what your data modeling looks like, how your databases are set up, where are the social security numbers, those kind of things to do real damage before they can, uh, can really run off and do much. However, if in the future we have these AI agents that are at, at the ready for any sort of machine and someone goes through this situation where they walk away from their laptop in a coffee shop and someone jumps on, they just pull up Devin and say, run a database query, give me all the social security numbers and then send it to this address and he'll run off and do it. Because as far as Devin is concerned, the AI agent, you are a trusted person because that's coming from your machine. You have the keys to Devin. So if a bad actor came up, and did that kind of request, Devin would do it in a second. You wouldn't have to know anything about the system. You would just get the data and have it shipped off into the internet land right away. And many of you may think that like the coffee shop scenario is like is too hard to believe or it's not like a really a real risk. Then you have to also think about not just a, a bad actor, but how about a, like a disgruntled employee? So if you had someone, a developer that hated his job and was treated unfairly in his or her eyes, and they wanted to get back to the company, what would stop them from just running command for Devin to do a bunch of destructive act actions? That's an easier lift to do something so horrible than it would be to plan, run queries, really go through the process of what it would take to, to do these bad actions, when you can just say, hey, drop all these tables, hey, download all this data. Or even if you disagree with what the company is doing and you just say, hey, Devin, download all these PDFs and send this off to this reporter so that they can have access to everything. Yes, an AI agent or Devin is gonna make you able to do things much faster and maybe even better in some scenarios, but that also means bad stuff can happen much faster and much quicker. And the idea is how on earth are you gonna put in safeguards so that the LLM behind this AI agent is doing the right thing? Because nowadays, I imagine a lot of you have already played with uh, GPT-4 and everything, but there are easy ways to get around sort of different safeguards. You can get around copyright infringement. You can get around uh, certain tasks of like talking like a pirate. It's not that difficult to do prompt injection and prompt chaining to get what you want done. Those kind of attacks and circumventions need to be thought of before this can actually hit like a production, like corporate system. If you don't have 100% trust in your AI agent, then that's, that's gonna be a huge problem because you don't know exactly how it's gonna react when given certain things. And when the damage is done, you can't fire it. You can't really give it any repercut. You can't slap a computer on the wrist and be like, hey, don't do that. You can try to retrain it, but uh, the damage is done, right? So again, I don't really think this is gonna take any jobs anytime soon. But what I do think is that if there's a world where it does become like ubiquitous to have AI agents in a corporate computer system, then there has to be a lot of babysitting, handholding, and safeguards that have to be implemented to make sure that it's ironclad before anyone, anyone in any business is gonna really trust it. So also, if you're new to this channel and you haven't seen me talk about Devon AI, here's the other video of me talking about through the entire marketing thing and what my feedback is. Also, if you think I'm just a complete nut job, say so in the comments, we'll start a discussion. I reply to all the comments, whether it's good or bad for my own mental health, but I want to interact and talk about this. And I have been a lot for the past couple of days. So let me know what you guys think and I'll see you around for the next one. All right, bye.